We call the reptile hobby a hobby because we all like to do it and it's usually quite a big passion for a lot of us. Now we can make an argument that at least here in the country of the United States, it's certainly a big industry part of that as well. But for many of us, even including myself, which is part of the industry, I certainly do call it a bit of a hobby as well as I'm trying to make it my you know, full-time career as well. But a big part of that, of why we call it the hobby, is that we really enjoy it and we love it and we wanna learn more things about it. And not only in addition to learning more and doing more research and learning new things all the time, it's very important that we learn about the history and the past and all the things that came together to make it is what it is today. So today I wanna to talk about five really cool books that you can read and check out that have to do with the reptile hobby to learn more about it and why it's so cool and interesting. So the first thing is I will say that this is not just like regular research about specific species. Like, you know, there are books like these about individual species that are very informative and really great. And I do recommend both of these books in general if you're into those species. But I'm talking about books that are going to be about the history and the hobby as a whole. So the first one is this, Stolen World. This is a really interesting book that talks specifically, at least a good majority of it, about how we essentially acquired and got a lot of the animals, reptiles, and amphibians into the United States, into the hobby today, both in the hands of private keepers like myself, as well as more zoological facilities. Essentially, this follows the misadventures slash criminality of mainly two individuals, one being Hank Moult, which not too many people have heard of, as well as Tom Crutchfield, which certainly is one of the big archetypes and cornerstones, not necessarily not riddled with controversy, and as you learn going through this book, not undeserved, of the reptile industry and hobby. Where this book goes through, and I will say this is not necessarily for the faint of heart for some people, so if you're a younger person, and uh, it's a slight trigger warning, you will hear, not hear, but you will read some very descriptive things about animals not being moved, treated, and transported in the best conditions. So that is for sure a trigger warning um, for this book. But this goes through a lot of the early, of the 80s and the 90s, even into early 2000s, about mostly these two men who really are the reason why a lot of the animals we have in this country are because of them. It goes through dealing with, you know, international criminals. It deals with extraditing people from this country and other people going to federal prison. All sorts of crazy stories about these two people who seem to be just kind of out of the blue, who may or may not have necessarily wanted to kind of like follow in the footsteps of you know, previous explorers and pioneers of the 20th century, but don't exactly work the way they things do the way they are now. And as controversial as what I'm making this appear to be, this is absolutely an amazing piece of reptile and just history in general that honestly, I feel that you learn a whole lot more from and that you are, a, you know, going to a much better place and a better understanding and appreciation of things after reading a book like this. The next one is one that I actually recently mentioned in a previous podcast, and this is The Invisible Ark in Defense of Captivity. So this is written by Dave and Tracy Barker, the Barkers. These are some of the like grand like the grandparents of the reptile industry. The Barkers are the ones that actually founded VPI. So any of you boa people out there, you've probably heard of the VPI T positive boas. They're the ones that prove that out, as well as some of the first in several different ball python morph combos, as well as quite a few different blood and short pi and short tail python combos. They have done so much for this industry, and I will say that even back in like I think it was like 2008 or nine or something, um, I went to my very first NARBC show uh, in uh, Arlington, and without buying anything, uh, Tracy just sat there and talked to me all about how they breed boas, how they established the pink panther and the T positive lines and all this really cool stuff for like half an hour just because she wanted to share her knowledge and passion with me. Now, to get back to the book outside of my little fun anecdotal story, this book is, it does talk a little bit about zoos, but it mostly talks about the, what is essentially a phenomenon of what is, will happen to where once like human industry, growth, expansion, and hubris will eventually lead to the extinction in the wild of many species not just reptiles, but species in general in the wild, that the only place that we will still be able to have them are in the hands of private keepers. And yes, obviously zoological facilities as well. 
And there, that is what essentially the invisible arc is, is collections of these very rare, endangered, and valuable species in the hands of individuals that are invisible to the public world that are helping to be able to manage to keep on to those animals in the future for not only to be able to just have in the future, but potentially to be able to be released back into the wild. Now, some of the views in here are pretty extreme to, you know, where essentially like zoos are closer to more like breeding facilities down the road. So that way we still are have the ability to have them in sustainable, healthy populations. A lot of those do get pretty extreme, even for my standards and my take. But that doesn't mean you have to necessarily agree with absolutely every single thing in there. And that's what's really cool about some of these books is that while not everything is 100% picture perfect, you know, white picket fence type of story, there is some dark stuff. There is some controversial stuff. There is some stuff even that you could be ashamed of a little bit being part of some of the events that happened. But that is why it's important to learn and understand these things. And it makes it seem like this book is really good. I absolutely, I would say that out of all the ones on this list, this is the one that I probably re mm, second recognize, uh, recommend. The next one is actually probably the one that I think is the best read. But again, this is something that I feel every person who wants to breed reptiles or any part of herpetoculture in the future for propagating species, this is absolutely a book that you should check out and hear from that kind of perspective and have a better understanding grasp and maybe, you know, a little bit of you know, a, a, a little bit of pride in it, I should say. I was really stumbling over that one again. But again, absolutely recommend this book. The Barkers, again, amazing, amazing people. Couldn't The hobby wouldn't be the same without them. So, as I mentioned previously, this is probably what I think the easiest read. And for anyone who just likes to hear stories, this might be the book for you. This is probably the easiest read, the funnest read, and probably the most explicit read. So this is written by Bill Love. Bill Love, again, is one of the architects of our industry, at least here in the United States. This essentially is kind of like the tales of his life from early childhood leading into his career and eventually meeting his wife, Kathy, um, who was a guest on our podcast a few months ago. Um, and then just kind of what his thoughts as well as what the future hobby will be like. This book is really fun. It honestly reads like you're at the pub listening to an old guy just tell stories, just like over a, just over a pint. This is what it sounds like he's reading this off to you and he's just telling stories. It's really, really cool. It's fun to listen to him. And again, I will say it's a little explicit because it's almost just like he's just kind of rattling it off um, and someone's just writing the stories down and transcribing them for him where he is unapologetic is a very good way to say where he embraces not only the stuff that he accomplished is done well but also he embraces his mistakes his mess ups things that he should have done better and he does hold himself pretty well accountable for um you know for the boomers or whatever you want to call it he does hold himself pretty well accountable as well as other people um that he met along the way friends not so friends and again what he thinks that might be really cool in the future this goes over like i said his early childhood his start into like the large industry of breeding and keeping where he goes on travels both in the united states and outside of the united states so realistically if you like traveling if you like uh, you know kind of sly sleazy stories if you like wild adventures if you are part of the reptile industry if you like wild animals this is a really good book to learn about kind of off-color history of just really cool amazing stuff and actually i'm a big history buff too and that's what i really like is hearing stories from history that number one affect me and i'm part of right now with history in the making but just hearing a bunch of other really cool stuff that i didn't learn before and partially as to why things are the way they are now so really great book reptile odyssey this is probably the funnest and the one i would recommend first to most people next up is a really interesting one this is rattlesnake under his hat so this is a book about essentially the guy that started reptile gardens up in the black hills in rapid city in south dakota 
So Reptile Gardens, which I assume that most people in the hobby, at least the United States, may have heard of Reptile Gardens. It's a very large zoological facility centering around almost exclusively reptiles and herpetoculture. They do have the Guinness World Record um, standing of having the most venomous reptiles in their collection. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're always on display. A lot of animals are kept behind the scenes um, that they learn from. They work on breeding programs and things like that. Um, this is a really interesting book. So this is a guy that, you know, who it's essentially his life story again. It's another biography where it tells the tales of when he was younger, he went to war, came back, and this tells of not only his passion for animals, excuse me, but um, not only his passion for animals, but also this talks about kind of his business savvy side and how he was able to essentially start what was at one point him just being, you know, taking photos and uh, doing small classes with uh, different species of snakes and lizards to almost like a roadside attraction to building it up to what it is now. This goes into how he started it, some of the innovations that he did to, you know, keep himself, you know, separate or above some of the other businesses practices of the day. This talks a little bit about where, you know, him traveling, um, going around and finding different reptiles, um, different things for his gift shop, where part of his gift shop is also kind of like a small international history where it talks a lot about a lot of the cultures of the places that he would travel and items and animals that where they came from as well, part of that people cultural part as well. Um, this is a really cool book. It talks a lot about, about that, but it also goes a little bit into kind of like the dark side of practice like the, of like turning animals into a business and being a business owner as well as you know working with animals there's there's a bit of a dark side of a bit of like a humanizing aspect that does come with that that a lot of people like you know in the facebook montage where it's you just see the good this does go a little bit into the bad so this is a really great read for the humanizing aspect as well as learning a little bit about one of kind of like the big like the big the hollywood star of herpetoculture and the reptile hobby in the united last States. one on the list actually i haven't quite finished this book i'm only about a third of the way through this is venom doc so this book is by dr brian fry he is a venomologist biologist from australia and he is world renowned probably the leading expert on biological toxins specifically with venoms and poisons a lot of which ends up dealing with reptiles because a lot of different reptiles are venomous um, and this goes through a very interesting kind of uh, dynamic telling of his adventures and his research into that and things that he would learn and research and get hands-on with um, it's the information about venomology and how all of that works and things that he discovered that now just the rest of the world is starting to learn and accept because of Dr. Fry here. It's really interesting. I will say though that as I go along, I might not be the biggest fan of Dr. Fry, like as a person. Um, you know, autobiographies and biographies, you end up like kind of seeing a lot more of the person in this as well. And he may, and I just may not like mesh with him personality wise there's a lot of things kind of about him that probably have to do with like where he comes from and his upbringing that I just don't really mesh with like how he interacts with other people and sometimes even almost like chauvinistic about things but I will say just the actual information about this and hearing him describe animals and the places and the things that he's doing is very interesting so I do still recommend it and that also kind of you know full circle a little bit brings it around to where you don't have to love everything about a person, about an animal, about a book, about a movie, whatever, if you can still appreciate and cultivate and learn things about those. So again, thank you so much for, you know, this kind of a book review. Sorry, I'm not really giving a whole lot of any animals out. You know, you can probably see a couple in the background behind me, but just kind of a quick cursory review again. So to start things off with, let's see, who do we start with? We started with Stolen, we started with Stolen World. Sorry, I got a whole bunch of books right in front of me. So Stolen World, kind of dark at times, but a really good book that if you want to learn about kind of how we got the animals to where we are now, really great book. Um, the Invisible Ark, again, this is about kind of what may happen in the future as well as what is 
potentially and actually happening right now in the hands of keepers and around the world and why this is so important. Reptile Odyssey by Bill Love travels around the world, travels in the United States, learning about it, just listening to stories from just a really cool individual person. And this is something that we absolutely need to hang on to is just listening to the words of wisdom from the old school guys of the hobby where they don't really come out and do podcasts as much. They don't come out to the different expos and give talks or just hang out and talk to people. They don't really do that a lot. So any opportunity that we have to listen to these people that were in the hobby and got things going and that when they go, they're taking all of this knowledge and experience and history with them. So any opportunity that we have to get that, we absolutely should take advantage of. And what was described to me by a person who's been in it longer than me, Ryan McVeigh, which is if there's someone who knows more than you, just shut up and listen. I know it sounds kind of bad, but absolutely just absorb that knowledge and information like a sponge. So last but not least, these two, Rattlesnake under his hat, Venom Dog, definitely more humanizing aspects of the reptile industry about biology, even about business sense and really cool things like that. Both of these, great information, very good reads. None of them are too long. None of them are very hard reads. Great books. I recommend all of them, especially, you know, if you or a person you know, like I think I put had a lot of these as like gift ideas a couple years ago for Christmas. Definitely good ideas for a gift for someone who's into that, learning more about things that you're a part of. Great, great books. So again, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Sorry, it was a small like er, step from the normal, usual reptile animal content. It'll be back probably to normal. I know I've done a couple things a little bit off the last little bit, like with building this rack behind me and doing this as well as normally for coming up the month of October, I normally do like a Halloween themed kind of month long different series of stuff. They never really seem to do too well and I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to really do anything super crazy and like all the traveling and adventures that I did for the last couple of years for that. I may not be able to do that this year again just because not really any traction and because I'm not making money, any money doing it. Um, can't really afford to be spending, you know, hundreds of dollars to travel three states over to do interviews. But hey, if you guys have any ideas or suggestions for like Halloween, spooky October things, as well as other ideas for other videos down the road, I do keep track of them. I put it all in my little snake notebook, although I'm getting almost out. I'm going to have to switch over to, I think, my Black Panther one after that. Um, but again, thank you so much. Questions, comments, concerns down below at the bottom of this. If you want to check out my Patreon to help support me, um, do all the really cool stuff as well as a few rewards, that's at the bottom of this. And if you have any other questions you'd like to get a little bit more of an in-depth response, jzsreptiles at gmail.com, jzsreptiles at gmail.com. Hope everyone had a, is having a great day. Apologies, I'm getting over a cold. Bleh. So again, thank you so much. Hope you're having a great day. We'll check you next time.